So here is a brand that I haven't covered a whole lot on my channel. I did do one or two reviews with my late friend Carlos from the channel Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. So I do have quite a bit of experience with this brand and I've tried a lot that the brand has to offer. Obviously, this is a brand that has a very rich history going back to 1752, even though I think their first fragrance was released in 1772. In any case, this new fragrance is called 2571. This is intended to be a bit of a futuristic fragrance. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this spicy aromatic green fragrance, so make sure to stay tuned. Now before I begin today's video and I give you my thoughts on the brand new Caswell Massey fragrance just released, this one is called 2571. I'm going to tell you all about the notes, the performance, comparisons, so on and so forth. I do want to start things off by saying that if you're a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell icon so you could be notified whenever I do upload future videos to the channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if you took something of value from today's episode, it would really mean a lot to me and it would greatly assist with the YouTube algorithm. So the company was founded in 1752. The name of this fragrance is actually 1752 backwards, which is 2571. And they, I think, wanted to create a fragrance that was a bit on the timeless side of things, a fragrance that would stand the test of time and also a fragrance that was in many ways futuristic. Now, in terms of the notes that are revealed on the packaging, we have sandalwood, cardamom, bergamot, and green floral. I looked online and I saw some other notes or accords, I should say, like amber. Also saw orris. So let's see if any of those ingredients come into play. Is this going to be more on the woodsy side of things, the amber side of things, the green side of things, or the spicy side of things? And also, can I compare it to any other popular designer or niche fragrances? I'll tell you all of that, but let's go ahead and start things off with the presentation. So right when this fragrance opens up, the first thing that I get from it is this spicy and citrusy tea vibe. And I know that that might sound a bit weird, especially considering the fact that there's no tea listed in here. It does say green floral, and I think the floral ingredient is iris, but it does kind of give me this tea vibe in it, which I find to be very tranquil and relaxing. I actually really do enjoy tea and fragrances and there's a lot of tea based fragrances out there that are some of my favorites and it's a note that I do think needs to be explored a lot more when it comes to both niche and designer fragrances. So it opens up with this bergamot spicy introduction. In terms of spices, cardamom is listed as a note. It's not a very strong cardamom fragrance and I've smelled a lot of really strong cardamom fragrances, some of which are paired up with coffee to kind of give it this Turkish coffee vibe. Some cardamom fragrances are on the sweeter side of things, maybe even a little bit powdery like a La Nuit de Lum by Yves Saint Laurent. Here we have a nice touch of cardamom, but I think it's a really nice complement to the sandalwood, which seeing those two in combination with one another would kind of remind me of something like Changing Constance by Penhaligans, but there isn't enough sweetness in here, so it's actually quite different from that. As a matter of fact, this spicy starchy tea vibe that I was getting from this fragrance reminded me ever so slightly of Te Noir 29 by Le Labo, which leads me to say if you like that fragrance, you should actually check this one out. However, that's just a very loose frame of reference. This fragrance is unique, right? So it does its own thing. The sandalwood in here is very smooth and rich. Not as creamy though, because whenever I think of that particular trait of sandalwood, I tend to associate it with sweetness and I'm not really getting anything sweet from this. So if you were expecting maybe the amber and that sandalwood combination to air on the side of sweet, you're not gonna get that from this fragrance, at least not as far as my nose can perceive. It's way too bright, citrusy, spicy, and smooth in a green sort of way. And I am a bit convinced that there could be a bit of orris in here. It does kind of give off like this clean white floral vibe. I know orris or iris is often associated with, you know, a lipstick or cosmetic bag type of a smell. You're not getting that from this fragrance, but I'm still very strongly <laughs> getting that tea vibe, right? And I know Tay Noir is 
black tea, right? So I'm not saying it smells like green tea or black tea or any other particular variety of the Camellia sinensis plant. What I am saying is that I am getting a tea vibe in general, but a lot of these other notes like the bergamot, the cardamom, the sandalwood, they all have a very fair and prominent role to play in this fragrance. If you're a fan of tea-based fragrances, you don't mind them being on the fresh and spicy side of things. <sighs> this one is really, really nice. You definitely owe it to yourself to give this one a try. This is one that I'm gonna be wearing a lot more in the spring and the summer because that bright citrusy and green nature makes it the perfect fragrance for as the weather starts to warm up. And we all know that we can use some warmth here on the uh, north, northeast of the United States. I live in New Jersey and it's been really, really cold. We actually had a snow day today. In any case, I hope you enjoy it and I hope you have the opportunity to try this one soon. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, certainly a unique fragrance. I thought because of that cardamom sandalwood combination that it was going to remind me of some other fragrances that I've tried, but it actually, you know, exceeded my expectations. Very nice, pleasant, smooth, spicy, green, fresh, and tranquil fragrance on account of that tea vibe that I get from it. It's actually really, really nice. Longevity on this one was about eight hours on my skin, which is above average. In terms of the projection, it was great for the first hour of application. For the first 45 minutes, I would say it radiated beyond an arm's length at that one hour mark within an arm's length at the four hour mark an elbow's length and right around that eight hour mark it became a skin scent. So this is one that you probably do wanna reapply at lunchtime. In terms of the versatility, perfectly unisex, great for the hotter weather, great for casual and formal scenarios, but I think it would be better suited for somebody who's a little bit older, a little bit more experienced when dealing with niche fragrances, especially given the fact that this has the cardamom, the sandalwood, the green notes, and combination of notes that you won't typically find in a designer fragrance, especially given the recent trend designer fragrances with the sclerine molecule, the lavender, the sweetness, the clubbing vibe, you're not gonna get that from this fragrance. And in terms of the presentation, I think it's actually not very futuristic. Instead, it's actually quite timeless and elegant. My final verdict on this fragrance is it is a solid, fresh, green, and spicy fragrance that gives off a tea vibe, very tranquil, calm, soothing, relaxing. I'm a fan of it, and I hope you have the opportunity to get your nose on it soon. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you took something of value from today's review. If you did, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell. Give this video a thumbs up. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.